Good morning. O Lord, open my lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. We pray to you, O Lord. You hear us in the morning. At sunrise, we offer our prayer and wait for your answers. Our scripture reading this morning is the Old Testament that is set for the third Sunday in Lent. It's a reading of the Ten Commandments. Listen for God's word to us. Then God spoke all of these words. <clears throat> I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that that is on earth below, beneath, or that that is in water underneath the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of their parents to the third and fourth generations of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but on the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son, or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For six days the Lord's made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God has given you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male, or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As part of the Reformed tradition, we hold um, the theology of John Calvin as kind of the pinnacle of what we understand um, God to, or who we understand God to be. And John Calvin had saw three uses of the law. The first one is probably the most obvious. The Ten Commandments give us a blueprint for how to behave towards God and towards neighbor. And in a sense, convict us of the times when we fall short. So the first use of the law is very simply to teach us how to live the Christian life. Okay, that makes sense. That's probably the most um, obvious form of it. The second one I think is interesting and probably particularly informs us as Presbyterians. The law tells us how to live our life in the civil and um, neighborhood community. This is not just how we behave to one another and those who are, who claim the name of Christian, but how we react in the community and how we react to people around us. And I, I think that that's telling because as Presbyterians, um, the pinnacle of our time together is, though it's worship feeds us, it feeds us to feed others. So the church cannot exist without continuing to reach out to our nearest neighbors and our neighbors far away. So it's, it's telling to me that that's Calvin's second use of the law. The third one is probably my favorite. The third use of the law is 
how we respond to God's grace that we can't ever earn. And our response is gratitude. So it's that balance of grace and gratitude. How can we act any differently as people who have received God's grace as a, a free gift, not something that we've earned? The response, Calvin tells us, is gratitude. And I think that living in response to grace and gratitude, with gratitude, changes the way we are in the second use of the law and the first use of the law, really. Because, you see, I've, I've noticed throughout my, um, my life that the people who can truly um, reach out to others rather than just turning in are the happiest. I had a dear friend and as she was approaching her 90th birthday, Velda loved to tell this story. And she told it, and every time I'd come to visit, she'd say, Pastor, I know you've heard it, but whatever deacon was with me, hadn't heard it yet. <laughs> and if, even if they had heard it, it was a story that Velda loved to tell. I think it was a story she loved to tell because it helped to tell who she was when she was at her happiest, when her husband was still alive, and her mother was still alive. She said, well, I went to my class reunion. And she said, and Abe was still with us. And so I went to the class reunion and my mom asked, well, Velda Marie, did you have a good time at your class reunion? And Abe responded, the only way that she could have had a better time is with a pair of roller skates and a second mouth. Velda was, <laughs> And that story just sort of encapsulated who Velda was. Velda was a person who constantly reached out, who knew all of her neighbors. And every time I visited her, she would say, can you believe in this little town, they built this beautiful place so I could come and live when I, the house got to be too much for me. She was in assisted living and she said, I just, isn't it lovely? And I remember she told me about, oh, it was, I guess it was about a couple weeks before her 90th birthday. And we were talking about her 90th birthday and my next visit would be right after it. And she said, now when you come to visit me, I will have moved to the nursing home side. And I said, oh, well, no, they don't do that exactly when you turn 90. And she said, yes, but I know the time is coming. And she said, and I think it will be soon. And she did. And she continued to make friends there. And Velda was the type of person who never um, stinted on giving a hug or sending a birthday card or sending um, a greeting she saw someone lonely and she sat next to him. She probably talked their ear off, but she sat next to them. And I realized that Velda saw everything through the lens of grace and gratitude. And because of the way she lived, she lived differently in her community. And she instinct instinctually loved her neighbor and loved God. And that was a powerful witness because the law only as convicting us of our wrongdoing doesn't do much more than guilt. But the law that reminds us of God's grace allows us to live with gratitude. Thanks be to God. Amen.
let us pray together. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. Eternal God, we rejoice this morning in the gift of life, which we have received by your grace, and the new life you give in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for ministries of compassion, witness, and service. Those who make and grow the things we need. The communities in which we live. Strengthen abilities to serve you today. Indications of your love at work in the world. God of grace, we offer our prayers for the needs of others as we commit ourselves to serve them, even as you have served us in Jesus Christ. Especially we pray for the church in Africa, the conservation of the soil, water, and air, those closest to us in this community, friends and relatives who are far away, the judgment to know and do what is right, God of all joy, fill our souls to overflowing with the fullness of your grace. In this season, remind us of your triumph over tragedy of the cross and your victory for us over the powers of sin and death, so that we may reflect your glory as disciples of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May the steadfast love of God, the abiding grace of Jesus Christ, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit be with us this day and always. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Beloved, have a wonderful day, and I will see you tomorrow for our midday prayer.